Okay. We have two minutes. We'll get two going minutes. here. All right, this all started out as a wickedly fun idea. Um, I'll have to blame it on Chris Dallin, who called Von Jacobson. By the way, they get up way too early in the morning. And they hatched this idea, and then they drafted, well, they called me and invited me. And of course, I thought it was crazy, but fun. I'm in. And then Tim Hughes was called, and he brought Russell. And we love Russell because he hooks us up, and we're live. We have satellite, and they're GPS tracking us wherever we go, so you can see if we get off track or not. And then Bill came with us because we wanted to videograph the whole entire adventure because we wanted to have a takeaway from this that state parks could use. When this first started, it was really just about a fun adventure. We should say that to make this work, we have to be on the road 24 hours a day through this period and try and make it back on time on Sunday. But Three that, minutes ago. That Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're already behind. But that means that at some of these parks, the park managers or someone representing those parks is going to be out there at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning just to stamp our books. We'll get a picture in front of a sign and hit the road. Can we just say a quick thank you to... Um, to uh, Ricky Haney at All Access Recreation who gave us the wheels and as you can see it's uh, we're not going to be roughing it really other than the fact that we're driving 24 hours a day. Time to take KSL Outdoors. This is Utah's most listened to program about hunting, fishing, camping, and high adventure. All the gear you need to buy, where the fish are biting, and secret places in Utah and around the world where you can have a blast. KSL Outdoors with host Tim Hughes on KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Hour number two and the final one for uh, the program for another week. I guess we'll squeeze one more of these in before uh, the new year, won't we? Yes. I'll be in Texas. Yes, I know you will. Yeah. Uh, but I'll call in, of course. Let's see, the game's what? Game's oh. at noon on that day. And oh. I think, I so think it's, it's about time. Game. I think it's yeah. the same time, yeah. All right. Yeah. You're yeah. <laughs> going to yeah. go, go visit James in yeah. Texas. Yeah, yeah we, we didn't roll. hear from James today. Uh, all right, let's... Uh, Let's go around the table, make sure everybody knows who's here. Jeff, sorry, of course. I'm here. Always holding down that seat over there, getting things ready Not always. for the website. I'm sometimes over there. <laughs> yeah, you were for the past couple of weeks. Thank you for that. Uh, Mike Nabodomskis. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Christmas Eve, doing the show. Yeah, how about that? Uh, the old St. Nick is on his way. Yep. Uh, although he's not coming to my house this year, which is okay with me. Uh, kids are all older. Grand I think kids I saw are... him last night. Did you? Yeah. I was in the hot tub. My TV doesn't work. Oh. Yeah, I'm transitioning my TV. I have a TV at my hot tub, by the way. So I'm sitting in my hot tub. I'm looking up, and I thought I saw a shot go across. It could have been a falling star, but hmm. I think it was preliminary ride over. I do. Yeah, on M- this side might, of the might have been what was in that cup too. I you know, know, with the curve of the air. TV in your hot tub. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Why you're fishing? Well, we haven't that's done that yet. Yeah. No, that's yeah. casting. That, I've that's never coming. cast it from the hot tub. <laughs> No, but it's the best. It's the best place to watch a game or whatever is in the hot tub. Oh, yeah, cool. but three hours in there, not good. No, I. You have to come out at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> you watch the first half or the second half. That's your choice. Yeah. Like a little prune, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, blood pressure drops to near zero, and they find you the next day, and it's Navadomskis. But I was just watching Stars last <laughs> night, and with this fog, I haven't seen it for a while. So <laughs> you know what the best thing is? Your hot tub's outside, then. Oh yeah. Is it best thing to do if you get a chance to in a hot tub? Is Sit outside in a hot tub in a nice snowstorm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta wear a hat ever. though. No, it, you don't. It no, gets you on don't. your glasses. You can't see the TV. I, I do. I do this every night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mike Seely also here, present in the county. I never know how to actually categorize you. I don't know how to categorize myself you're, either. You're, you're, you're a jack of all trades, but uh, master of none. Usually shows up when we're in West Yellowstone because we're at you know his. You know, it's, it's, place. it's funny, and this is going to sound stupid to a lot of people, and I apologize about that, but I figured out last night I'm the Terry Bradshaw of The Tonight Show. It seems like Terry Bradshaw shows up on The Tonight Show every time they have a spot that they can't fill. Yeah. Terry Bradshaw shows up, and You're I figured out that's dial. my that yeah that's that's my role here. Is he was just good. Whenever he was I good last thing. night, by the oh, way. That I watched for that. Yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. All right, and uh, Barbara Riddle is with us. Good morning. Good morning. She Tim. got drug in here against her will. No, she... I did not. I was actually very very excited to come in. She did her hair. Yeah. It was a two uh, cup coffee morning. You know what? Oh yeah, yeah, and I'm not in a baseball cap this morning. <laughs> no. Yeah. 
Uh, Chris Dallin, Great to be with you who morning, brought the group too. together. Turn that thing around the other way, will you, just so I can hear it. No, nope. the other way. Spin it all the way right. There, there you, you are. There we go. All right. All right. All right. You can hear me now? Yeah. Great to be with you this morning. Uh, came bearing gifts, which we appreciate very much. Absolutely. Uh, also, uh, Vaughn Jacobson with us. Yep, I'm here. Merry Christmas. And and uh, Bill Francis has also uh, shown up. And I'm going to have Bill run over to that microphone over there. Jeff, okay. if you can Got share it. that. I can turn that it. The man behind the camera. Yeah, Bill from the Imagination Company. He's the guy that documented every moment or most of the moments anyway thankfully not every moment or at Edited least <laughs> moments <laughs> they didn't all make the uh, final cut which is a good thing yeah. uh, from our uh, 43 parks and 72 hour state park adventure bill first of all thanks for that work uh, and you've actually brought dvds of that in today 90 minutes long isn't it Yep, 93 minutes. 93 minutes long. Uh, and we had a little premiere screening of it out at uh, Antelope Island. We did. Which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But you are now going to make that available on DVD to anybody. Right. How do they get one? Um, right now you can get it at Im Image Depot on in Ogden on 25th Street and then also at the Davis uh, Visitors Bureau. And you've got it in uh, regular DVD or Blu-ray, right. I understand. Which is fantastic. And then, Bill, isn't there also the plan? It's going to be distributed through State Parks gift shops. Yes. Um, okay. It'll be available at first of next year. You What's know, this isn't just a shameless plug for Bill, though. This is an opportunity to help your friends and family understand the beauty of, of Utah. If they're coming to Utah, this is a great way to, to cue them up for some of the things that they can see and experience with you while they're here on vacation. Yeah, enjoy the state parks with the Six Stooges. I mean, the road <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> they're road trippers. I feel like I'm in the land of misfit toys here. <laughs> There was actually seven of us there for a little while, there wasn't was. there? <laughs> there <laughs> was, and we had a lot of fun. Jeff came to the rescue. Jeff and, said uh, he didn't know if he wanted to be one of us or not. And Tim's got a great radio voice, but I tell you what, he's a ham behind the camera. Well, we had a good time. <laughs> we did. Uh, and I'm looking forward to new projects, and we're going to talk about new projects. But what's going to be the sell-through price on this guy? Uh, it's going to be right around fifteen dollars. Fifteen bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, but just a fantastic way, as Vaughn said, to really see what's out there in our state. That's right. And and I found out. Did we ever figure out? I never got the return volley on the email of which state park we actually missed. <laughs> there was one that was missing. <laughs> what yes. was it? Only on the video. Wait, wait. We hit yeah. all forty. We hit all forty three. Yeah. But yeah. on the video, we missed one. Deer Creek. Deer Creek. Ooh. Uh, so that wasn't even in the original screening. Well, I actually edited it. For some reason, it got left out of the DVD. Oh. Even out on the island, it was just not there. Okay. But we now almost it's, got fired now it's over that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's Bill Francis. Uh, and next year's adventure is going to be a little tougher for him to actually document, I think. Mm -hmm. And Jeff was saying at the top of the hour, GoPro is probably the way to do it because you're not going to want to expose these cameras of yours to every bump and bruise. Um, GoPro or this new camera called Contour. Oh, yeah, I've got a Contour. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe three of those and, and still one of the bigger ones for at the actual locations. Yeah. Aren't there like helmet cameras too? In That's this what the contour awesome. is. Yeah. No oh, okay. okay. All right. Good. So uh, many thanks to Bill Francis and a uh, talented man. He's done a lot of great stuff. And, and uh, if you can want to pick up a copy of this uh, DVD, whether you need the Blu-ray or the standard version, you can do that uh, at a couple of different places. Again, uh, at your office, right? My office, Barbara? Davis Area Convention Visitors Bureau. Or Image Depot in Ogden, and 25th Street. Image Depot, Vaughn, was the guy that took care of all of our logos the vinyl and things and, yeah, on, the, that's right. on the motorhome. And yeah, the big signs you see yeah. all came from uh, Matt over Imaging Depot. And then hopefully after the first of the year, the State Parks Visitor Centers right. throughout the whole entire state. Yeah, mm -hmm. which would be fantastic. And, mm -hmm. and this is one of those that's an evergreen, as we like to say, that it could sit there for years and always be relevant. Uh, for them to sell, you know, through it all of the uh, state parks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the state parks adventure is right up there in the top two, I think, probably from 2011 uh, for us, if not the very top for, for many people, hopefully from a listening standpoint, certainly from those of us that participated in it. That's right. But quite an adventure. And, Jeff, you took a phone call during the news. I want to make sure we mention uh, a gal that called from where? It was uh, Sandy in Yakima, Washington. Yakima, Washington. And uh, she said she loves the show, yep. and, and we solicited listeners to tell us what their favorite were, uh, favorite programs were, favorite moments. R uh, Barbara's going to like this one. Barbara's going to love this. Uh, that uh, The top for her was the Bison Roundup. Ooh, Ooh sweet. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. That's wonderful. She liked that broadcast. That was one of my highlights, too. And then uh, Bighorn Sheep. We had, uh, with uh, Sky Call Satellite, I think we had a... 
a call from uh, somebody who was out hunting bighorn sheep. You so. didn't know we were big in Yakima. No. Yeah. But it's amazing. Know. It's amazing. Uh, you can hear us everywhere I go. You can just turn on KSL, and there it is. Yeah, people all over the West. Uh, we're planning on, and here comes the big, uh, the big news, uh, we're planning on stepping it up a little bit even bigger than uh, 43 parks in 72 hours. Now, this isn't an adventure we will try to get done in three days. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, we're going to be hard-pressed to get it done in a week, I yes. think. We figure six days. But the effort will be to go... Well, it would also depend on if you're going north and south or east and west. We're going uh, north. It'll be north and south. North and okay. south. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting ahead of yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is something that goes back several years, maybe more than several, with Fred Hayes, who heads up the uh, off-roading uh, department of the uh, Department of Natural Resources in the state of Utah. And uh, we've talked about this dream of once all the trails were linked to actually go ATV border to border from Idaho on the mm-hmm. north to, is it Arizona, Arizona. on the Arizona. south? Yeah. Arizona yeah. on the south. <laughs> is it yeah. Arizona? He <laughs> 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 was not a geography map. student. <laughs> well, now, in his defense, we could have gone to the Four Corners area and gone Hang to New on. Mexico. That's oh, my point. He was, here. depending on the trails, you could okay. end up in Nevada. He just missed out on your geography rant and rave last week when he was in Qatar. I can give you horror stories about that map test I give. Yeah. I've heard about you. By the way, uh, not to get sidetracked here, but my wife actually works with someone that used to be students of yours. Oh, yeah? They talk about how tough you are. Well, somebody's got to do it. I got these guns for something. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this. I don't do it for the money, okay? His guns, by the way, is pointing to his thighs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Fred Hayes has had this dream of a long time, and he had to wait for the trail systems to actually finally be complete and linked. And there's a couple of places where we're going to have to go on blacktop. Am well, I right? Maybe, maybe. That's still up in the air. But the goal is to do the whole thing. So Fred and his office are working on the trail plan. Uh, we, will be, we will start our day or our, our adventure with a broadcast somewhere in the north. In Idaho. In right Idaho. Right on the border. Yep. And we will start making our way all the way through Utah via ATV trails. That's right. And uh, stop hopefully each night with a place to bed down. Except for one night. We'll be camping out somewhere. Somewhere along the way. We haven't figured that out yet. (laughs) There's still a lot of details to come, but this is going to be wild. Well, and the plan, too, is there's going to be segments for this one. So our hope is is we'll have a lot of friends that will join us for different segments along the way. And then we'll also connect up with the Rocky Mountain ATV UTV Jamboree down in Richfield yeah. um, for their 20th annual, which is the 17th to the 21st of, of September. So we're talking mid-September. Yes. 15th through the 22nd, basically. That's right. And uh, we tried to guess when the best time would be for weather, but weather's always unpredictable. That could throw some... A- extra added adventure into this adventure, I think. <laughs> That's right. But this also gives folks uh, time September's to plan, mild. too. mild. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mild. It's the most mild month. Hopefully mm. the snow's off the mountains by then yeah. and hasn't yeah. come back. But that gives people time to, to set their schedules and make plans. Because like Barbara said, there's going to be an opportunity for people to join us for segments of this trip. And have a real good experience. Speaking have a really good experience on these segments as they ride with us. Yeah. Uh, and... We can't really throw the invitation out for just anybody to do that because it would not be, yet. It would be craziness. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you, anybody that I have told this plan to wants to go along. I'm telling you, our friend Braxton Spout, Southwick will be involved in this one. Yeah. Oh, I know. He would love to do it. If he could Absolutely. do it, he'd do it in a truck instead of an ATV. <laughs> well, but, granted, but um, and this one's going to be a little tougher on the backside than uh, doing the uh, motorhome thing. I'm ordering mine with full suspension. <laughs> well, you know, we got to figure out something for the thumb too, so that we've got some support in holding the throttle down. Yeah. Start with squeeze balls right now. Just, just. I don't think there's enough the squeeze balls for, <laughs> <laughs> for the adventure Full we're going suspension, on. suspension, kidney belt, <laughs> but and to, we're ready to but go. To, but to pull this off, it should be about 100 miles a day, give yeah. or take. Yeah. And uh, we'll be staying hopefully in some nice spots along the way that we'll be able to record and, and share mm-hmm. what the accommodations are there. Daniel Summit Lodge has already expressed interest in being one of those places. Sweet. And one of the things we're really uh, reaching out for, and so it might be a good time just to throw it out and see if we can get participation from a manufacturer. Uh, but we're going to need machines, obviously, and the support of uh, whatever we might need out there. But a manufacturer of uh, ATVs, and there's some great brands. I'm, I'm going to call out Dean Feltenbarger, full throttle. Yeah. I'm calling him out right now. Old school buddy of yours. That's right. If he has contacts that can make <laughs> this work. Uh, initially, there'll be, what, eight of us, I think? Right. 
There are yes, because we've got Fred, Fred Chris, and Chris that right. have joined us from state parks. And believe me, uh, I want Fred to be in the lead because uh, I don't want to take a wrong turn and end up in Colorado <laughs> and try to figure out why. Wait a minute. We'll have wrong way. I mean, Russ Smith there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're relying. That's why we're relying on uh, Fred Hayes yeah. for the direction. This we'll see if Russ is waking the, up no, yet. He can't do the trail. <laughs> but I, I, well, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk more about the logistics of all of this and what the plans are for it. But uh, that's how we're planning on following up the forty-three parks in seventy-two hours. Is to take you border to border on what we think will be six days. Uh, and uh, none of us have done that. Obviously, ridden that far for that long. We don't know of anybody who's done it at all in the state of Utah on ATV. So yeah. this will be a first. Yeah. Uh, Has uh, anybody looked at the Guinness Book of World Records yet? No. Okay. We will. <laughs> we tried to get Guinness in- involved with the last one. It, it got to be a little tricky. Yeah. And we had an application and all. Yeah. yeah. So. They all don't right. take mental cases. Let's take a break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll come back with more in just a minute. So the real trick is, is keeping the egg in the bowl while it's cooking without splashing over. This is extreme cooking at its best. I'm telling you what, just staying on your feet is a challenge, let alone scrambling an egg. Thank goodness they're not over easy, that's all I can say. Another good thing not to do on a trip like this is to try to open the fridge when you're making uh, turns and twists and so on. I open the door over there and a Coke can, do you set it to smack me on the head? So it truly is extreme cooking. The only place where you can get hazard pay for cooking. There's no pay involved at all. You haven't had one yet? Mm. Oh, Tim, this is so good. You have salt no and pepper idea. on yours, Tim? Okay. We have just crossed, or are getting close to crossing, the 1,000 mile mark in heading into our 30th hour, 18 state parks, and we're on the longest stretch we've had between parks as we are in search now of uh, Goosenecks, which is way down in the Four Corners area, southeast part of the state, and uh, right out by Mexican Hat. So that's our next stop is Goosenecks, but what a ride since we got done talking with you yesterday. Where the hell is this state park? I don't know, man. You said it was on your map. It is. No, we're getting there. Jeez, Tim. Jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Mine. Holy cow, look at that man. Was this a shortcut or something? This is the road. Tell them to send the rescue squad. We need life flight! Life flight! You've heard of Aflac, we need life flight! Yeah. Ain't no doubt where we're going. Let me ask the people at home a question. Would you consider it a bad sign that there are no other vehicles on this road? And that it's not paved? Ross, I'm okay. Yeah, but I'm on this side, man. <laughs> so you're the first to go. We, la- we land on top of you. I'm climbing as fast as I can to get out that door. Uh, now you know why they put that door in there. Uh, for the Pokey Duck way. How long until we get down there? We'll get there. Is somebody, is somebody calling to wonder, I'm watching your track. Have you ever been on that road before? This is the right road. Yeah. <laughs> Navigator. We talked about most of that right? We did? Yeah, we did. With who? With in our meetings. You guys didn't realize what that meant exactly. Well, I didn't either. <laughs> now we just gotta go up the other side when we're done. <laughs> He's lying. I hope I am. <laughs> we're going I hope the I'm other lying. Way. No, you said we go out the other way. Yeah, we do. Now you're not sure? No, I'm sure. No, you're not sure? I am sure. (laughs) 
I've warned you people. Yeah, he warned you. I like Russ, but he finds these roads way too often. There's only one of two gravel roads that we gotta go on. Never in a 35-foot motorhome, though. I thought it was gonna be a 30-foot motorhome. Nobody told me it was a 35-foot motorhome. If I'd known it was a 35-foot, we would have never gone on this. Here's one more thing off my bucket list. Hey, we got paved road! Yeah, baby. All right, everybody feel better now? Let's do it again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please give a hand to your driver for safely bringing you down the mountain. Uh, remember, he does work for tips only. And here's the latest tip. Don't take this road! Oh. Oh. Uh, we, we made it. Look! Here we are at uh, Goosenecks State Park. Goosenecks, just uh, like the name might imply, is really a twisted piece of the river. If my memory serves me correctly, I think there's five miles of river within one horizontal mile of travel. So uh, that tells you a little bit about how twisted the river is down below us. It's uh, over a thousand feet to the bottom and you look straight off the edge here. It's unofficial, but 1,027 miles. KSL Outdoors, from camping in southern Utah to climbing in northern Africa, it's all here on KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. All right, got about four minutes before we have to head to the news center, and we'll check in with uh, Roger, find out what's uh, happening locally and regionally for you. But uh, finishing up our conversation here about the plans for 2011, and there's a lot of details, Barbara, still left to go in putting this whole thing together. Yeah, we really need to finalize all the segments, um, and then uh, the plan is is to have like a party at each of the the destinations that we arrive at each night, and really give them a little bit of a plug. And we're hoping a really good home cooked meal every night, and of course the bed. Yeah, have you ever been down to the uh, jamboree that takes mm, place in Richfield? I haven't. On, no, uh, and they are excited to is, be part of this. It is amazing yeah. uh, when they shut down Main Street, and I don't know how many hundreds of. Uh, of uh, ATVs there are lined up in a huge parade that make their way down that road. Russ and I took the opportunity a couple of years ago to go do that. So the, the timing of our trip is meant to coincide with some mm -hmm. of these gatherings across the state. And uh, Vaughn was telling us, and Vaughn had to sneak out, but Vaughn was telling us that uh, many of the ATV organizations that have caught wind of this plan are anxious to at least ride a segment of this ride with us, which w reminded me of kind of like the days when we uh, rode our motorcycles to... Uh, Sturgis, you know, for the big rally back there. Uh, it seems like you go around a turn and five bikes turn into ten bikes, and then you go around another turn and there's 50 <laughs> of you back there, and then they're lined up for miles by the time you get close. Um, obviously, we can't have that many people going night in and night out with us during this trip, but uh, we still are going to encourage a lot of participation along the way. So over the next months, some things that we have to get done. Uh, again, we're looking for a manufacturer that would like to be involved, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be reaching out to those people. We're looking for places to stay along the way each night. Yep. And uh, we, we need support vehicles, obviously, yeah, <laughs> just do. in case there's breakdowns along the way. But uh, That never happened. No. no, no, no. It's mm -hmm. going to be all very positive. And, of course, <laughs> we'll work with the Office of Tourism as well and really giving them an, an opportunity to, to uh, shout out about all the great tourism aspects of this adventure. Yeah. Uh, what do we do to train for this, exactly? I mean, because <laughs> it, it's going to be painful. I was thinking the other day, day three of 100 miles a day, so you're 300 miles into it, and you know you've got three more days to go. Cleans. And these aren't paved roads, so it's going to be bumpy, and it's going to be dusty. and Mountain Cleans. Bikes. I'm serious. Cleans. Um, just what are you calling them? Cleans. Okay. Okay, regular Olympic bar, okay? And you throw it up. 
to here to your chest. So you take it from the ground to your chest. And what that does is, first off, is your grip. It makes your hands incredibly strong. And then it's get your lower back and all those muscles that you're going to use, the strain you're going to get between your shoulder blades and your lower back. And huh. Yeah, so cleans. This is the one I recommend. Three days a week, Navi will be holding classes early in the morning. I love it. You're all expected to be there. <laughs> and I'm being told squeeze balls, too. Of course, I don't know if there are enough Well, this will, this will to... take the place of the squeeze ball. Okay, you can do hanging good. cleans or, or what they call full cleans. You know, I recommend those. Uh, yeah. How cleans? about the mountain bike all, all summer and winter long? Well, mountain biking will get your legs in shape, but... If you it's a hit, different hit if enough it, trails, you're going to be bouncing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing's going to prepare you for this. <laughs> 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 I still believe none of, none of that is going to get you actually ready for what's, Russ uh, what's to come. Russ is going. Russ is going. Russ is going. Just bring a big bottle of uh, ibuprofen and Tylenol. Yeah, and let me tell you, you get a new a new spin on breaking wind when you're with Russ. There. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we spent some time with yeah, Russ, you know what Mr. I'm back about. Trail Man, in yeah. close quarters, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. Anyway, th- this was an idea we kicked around. I don't know where we go from here after 2011, but... Uh... Well, and I really believe that the point is, Tim, is that folks can say a lot about Paris, France, and about Mexico and Iceland, but they live in Utah, and there's not a lot of folks that can say, I've been to every every uh, item to see in Utah, and it's just a great thing to do. Get out and see your state and well, get to know what's, what's here. Well, and the plan, too, with this particular um, outing is... We want to do it in such a way that anybody can do it. Right. So it's to put ATVing on the map statewide, border to border. And, and by the way, our effort is not just to get from point A to point B. We're going to take some side roads uh, along the way because Fred Hayes, and this is the other reason why he's going to be leading the group, Fred Hayes knows where all of those beauty mm-hmm. spots are, yep. where you're going to get the overlooks and where you're going to get the uh, magnificent color and, and uh, the side opportunities that you don't get anywhere else in the world. Well, and we have Chris, I think it's Haller, coming with us as well, and right. he does the ATVing for the state, um, I think from the safety perspective. And those guys are like kids in a candy store. They're so excited about this adventure, as are we. Yeah. So September 15th through the 22nd is yes. the plan. That's the plan. Uh, and uh, w- we don't know. Something could change between now and then, but that's the plan, and we're going to share it with all of our listeners, and it should be quite an adventure. Jump on board with us. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. We're, we're going to set up a website soon and so you can see what's happening and going yeah. on. Yeah. And uh, thanks again to uh, Bill Francis, who's behind the camera this morning, making sure that uh, – Everything we said actually gets done. <laughs> no, Uh-oh. no. Remember on this date you said. So uh, we'll probably have that uh, that video as we did the first time up on a website where you can follow us and look forward to the adventure. Guys, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming in this morning. <laughs> This is Coral Pink Sand Dune State Park. We're about two miles from the Arizona border, so we're about the southernmost park in the state. The dune field is about 5,000 acres of just soft, fine coral pink sand. We we do have a small campground. We've got a day-use area with an interpretive nature trail. Takes about a half hour to walk. And the visitor center over there's got uh, a sand collection that's kind of fun to see. I'd never seen one before I came here, but it's got sand from all over the world. It, it's a popular destination for any kind of sand machine. We get uh, sand rails, dune buggies, four wheelers, motorcycles. Uh, sometimes we'll get Jeeps and trucks out here. They all have to have a flag on there, obey the law, and be registered as such. But uh, other than that, it's, it's a great place to go.